Well, September 16, 2023 has passed. Remote ID is there for your drone. Now you have a non-remote ID compliant drone. <laughs> I'll show you how it's done. Stay tuned. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. If this is the first time to my channel, please don't forget, like, subscribe, hit the bell if you want to be notified about future videos of mine. Remote ID. Remote ID has been implemented by the FAA, uh, effective as of September 16, 2023. Small modules have been passed out or are available for purchase. And the problem is that the supply was kind of short. So therefore they extended the enforceable rate to March of 2024. I found a module on Amazon for 80 bucks uh, made by Holystone that actually is compatible with, with my drone, which is the Auto Evo 2 Pro V1, which is not remote compliant. Also, small drones such as these, 249 grams, if you're part 107 pilot, you have to register it if you fly it under part 107. Gonna require this too. More to that later. Now let's take a look real quick what comes in it. It's pretty simple, it's pretty easy. Uh, it is the, it comes with the manual, which in this case shows you pretty much everything that you need to know about this module and how to get it running. It also shows you a QR code on where to download the app for the iOS or for the Android. Next within here, we have a small um, sticker that you can actually put on onto the drone afterwards, which comes with that small Velcro thing, goes in the back of the module itself and on top of your drone. Do I necessarily trust it? I'm not quite sure yet. And of course, it does come with the small module. Made by Holystone for Holystone drones, but also compatible with other drones. Um, we'll get to that once we start it up and do the registry on it. This thing is tiny. It weighs uh, a total of 35 grams. That easily fits size-wise on top of your mini or it even fits on top your bigger version of my drone right over here, which is the Auto Evo 2 Pro, where I can mount it wherever I want it to. The module itself comes with a small registry number right over here, which will be hard-coded into this module itself. And then you can utilize the QR code in the manual in order to download the app that you need with the device that you use to fly your drone. In my case, it is with the Triple Tech 8, and I downloaded the the Drone Go by Holy Stone, Drone Go 2 by Holy Stone. And once you download the Drone Go, Drone Go 2 app from Holy Stone, there will be a big plus in the middle. Now, in order to start up this module, you'll have to hold this button right in the center. You hold the button and the module will turn on with both of its lights on. At that point, with both of those lights on, we'll press the plus sign. And with the plus sign on the Bluetooth that you've initially started, your Go to app will show you that there is a module. You click on that module and in the top part, you will see the remote ID series number, which then is followed by the operator ID, uh, which is only mandatory within the EU. And then the aircraft model you can put, as I did with mine's on Auto Evo 2 Pro, but you can put pretty much everything else inside there. Uh, besides that, you can put the weight and you can uh, it automatically determines the UAS class for you. Once that stuff is done, you'll just check it and it's all good. And that was the simple steps to actually get it set. Now, in order to start it up, you'll start it up straight here. Hold the button until the drone, until the, the module starts blinking. Once it's blinking, it's automatically telling you that it is right now uh, transmitting the remote ID signal. You do not have to, as a pilot, to check if your module is actually transmitting based on the manufacturer that it's blinking in this manner right here, it automatically is approved that it can go up in the air and it will broadcast the signal, which probably is gonna range about two miles of a distance because it's made by Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. For Pod 107 pilots, there is a serial number on this. For Pod 107 pilots, it's also required that every drone registered within the FAA um, that you have on your inventory list that you put one model on top 
each drone, while recreational pilots can share that number. So while punching in the serial number for the remote ID, uh, it will be shared amongst any device that the recreational that they use during recreational flying. Now for part 107, you do not have to buy every single one if you want to do the simple step of simply going onto the FAA website, going into inventory, deleting the serial number on that and moving the serial number over to the next drone that you're doing. It takes a total of maybe two minutes if you have good cell phone reception somewhere, uh, good internet access, and you can go through your Chrome browser on your phone or your Safari, whatever you use, go onto the FAA website, check on your inventory, go into your inventory, delete that ID from there, move it over to the next drone, boom, you're done. It actually has, a, a I believe, an autofill function in there as well, which I usually do because I'm not going to purchase multiple devices just to be in compliance with remote ID. Now with remote ID, also there were some questions that I was asked and that I received based on the September 16th deadline. Uh, Charles Baker, for example, from Illinois asked me if, um, if I'm not compliant with remote ID at this point, if I will be penalized or if I receive a fine. You can receive a fine if you fly the drone outside of the limits of that remote ID, but the chances are pretty slim because the FAA does not have enough enforcement agency Plus, it doesn't have enough people, and if you don't do anything stupid, I don't think that if not having a remote ID module is going to hurt you in any type of way. Unless there's an incident that occurred, the drone falls out of the sky, you always got to go with the what if. Do I entice you not to fly with the uh, remote ID? No, I'm not. I'm actually enticing you to buy one of these and actually to put it onto your drone and to fly it to be within the compliance so that nobody can sting on and against anything about you and nobody can do anything in general. To complain about it now another part was that people always told me that oh remote id the big scare was there uh, i believe it was erin that called me from new york and actually erin stated that she is afraid of that we should go fly somewhere that somebody is going to approach her and is going to go harass her based on that they can find her on the drone app for the remote id which is going to transmit ultimately her position now let me tell you one thing i tested out multiple devices and i've tested out multiple uh transmitters i've tested out multiple apps that are actually to be have to be on a phone first of all most people don't even know about the rules of drone flying in itself so therefore because they don't really know about it they barely know about remote id regardless of that they don't even think of having to download an app to look for the drone or the operator via gps coordinates or to follow them uh, based on what the google Maps show shows them Besides that, this module only transmit up to a range of like about two miles, I would say. Um, so if you're outside of any of the two miles of Karen's, um, they won't even be able to find you if they do manage to download the app. Besides all that, the app is delayed. So if you have a remote ID module that is actually currently doing this stuff, by the time the Karen shows up, you might be well as done already, unless you're really hanging out around the area and you guys are flying drones all together with multiple people to be seen. Now, in that case, it's casual that people are going to come around anyway. So you would have to deal with the Karen regardless of that app or not. But I'm telling you right now that the percentage of people as Karens uh, or drone Karens or Kevins is going to come around. It's still going to be the same percentage as before remote ID, simply because they're going to hear your drone, they're going to see your drone, they're going to see you operating it, or if you're somewhere around. So now if you're hiding out in a car, or if you're doing whatever, uh, of course, it's going to be harder for them to find you. But majority of the time, I would say that most times these drone carriers and stuff don't even know that there is an app out there that you have to download in order to look for remote ID if there's a drone around. Besides that, the FAA made it sound like that uh, they're contacting law for local law enforcement agencies. I spoke to a couple of my law enforcement friends over here and the local law enforcement in general. And as being one of the advisors for the, for the drone administration and all that stuff, uh, I can tell you right now that majority of police enforcement officers don't even know about remote ID. Neither do they know how to track down that remote ID app or that they have to use that app during the time. It's usually when there's a complaint filed about the drone that people show up, then they go follow through the regular steps just as they would before remote ID or as they have done prior to remote ID. Vegas, on the other hand, had a uh, course, I believe, where law enforcement had to show up for remote ID, and they actually did remote ID because of multiple events that they had, such as Formula One, such as football, there's uh, a Super Bowl coming up, uh, where the Raiders Stadium is actually going to be hosting the Super Bowl in 2024, 
and uh, therefore they needed to know about the drone laws and drone, drone enforcement and also uh, about I believe about the scanning app and remote ID so two officers told me over there that they actually went to class already but they forgot to have the stuff that they learned in there <laughs> Now, another thing is that because of the shortage of the modules dur during the time of release of this requirement, which was September 16th, the FAA actually extended that period of possible enforcement uh, by not being compliant because you couldn't get one of these um, up to March 16th of 2024, I believe. So therefore, they extended it by five months um, where they are considering not to enforce if you don't have a remote ID at that time because you couldn't get one. Now, I think that excuse is dying out lately because Amazon has a lot of these modules. They're ranging from in between $40 to $200. Now, I tried a couple modules out. Two of them were $42, one was $37. They were a total crap because I couldn't even get the app to work. Uh, I upgraded to a $200 version, which was way too expensive, and the app would sort of kind of like um, leave me hanging or crash my phone. So therefore I returned it to save my money because I stumbled over the Holy Stone FAA approved module, which worked right off the box, right off the way. And there was no, it's not crap. The only bad part about this module is it does not come with a USB-C charger. So you can use, utilize any USB-C charger that um, in order to charge this module, the module itself, I believe this module has a battery life of about five hours. If you want to run it for like five hours straight, uh, which is usually not the case because your drone battery is only like 30 minutes, you can charge the stuff through USB-C, but you have to provide your own cable, which is kind of yeah, it's all right. I mean, cell phones do it these days too. So now the question is, when do you need to apply this? Any and all drones above 249 grams for recreational flyers have to apply this module onto their drones to make it compliant. If it's not already updated through the software, which in my case, the Auto Leave 2 Pro V1 does not provide that. So therefore I had to pick up a module like this. Besides that, there's smaller drones like the 249 gram Mavic Mini, which is the first of the mini series that is non-compliant with the remote ID. So therefore I have to add that on to this tiny little drone as well. If I want to fly this drone under part 107, or if for any reason as a recreational guy, I registered this drone. Now the mini three has extended batteries. So therefore it goes over 249 grams or even I believe the mini four. So therefore they have to be registered. Once they're registered, regardless of what you do, you will have to have the remote ID module or they have to be a remote ID compliant. And I believe the Mini 3 and the Mini 4 are both already through software remote ID compliant and automatically transmit that. There's also another waiver that can be filed for authorized or recognized areas such as RC airfields and all that stuff where remote ID is not necessarily required during the time of the waiver of the event and all that stuff. But that's a whole different story. Today, I just wanted to show you guys how to make your drone remote ID compliant. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you guys did, please don't forget, like, subscribe, hit the bell if you want to be notified about future videos of mine. Also, please don't forget, be a nice human, make somebody else smile, and definitely pay it forward. Love you all. Aloha. Why is the light so hot? Oops, my module is still on. Did I forget anything? Did I forget anything? I hope I didn't forget anything. It's so bad when you become a YouTuber, you're talking to yourself all the time. I think I got it all. I hope. I think. I know. I want to believe that I got it all. <laughs> I hope I got it all. How about them cowboys, huh? <laughs>